I've been going into beauty supply stores since before I can walk. My mom probably pushed my stroller into one. But I've never gone into a Black-owned beauty supply store. Your total is 2609. Now I own one. <laughs> Decorating ourselves with accessories, with hair, colors, styles, brings joy. Even as a mother greases her daughter's scalp, it's a time for them to bond. And also braids were used to put escape routes and to know that something we did with our hair carried us to freedom. It shows how the way we decorate ourselves and the way we use these things are so important. It is in your hands. It is in your hands. Y'all see what the f is going on with them now? The orange hair, by the way, is symbolic of I'm running on fire. I just want the world to know that I'm that girl. Times where North want to design a, a, a dress made out of bubble wrap in the morning, and I become her assistant designer. Had it not been for the social message, maybe the clothes wouldn't have been that popular. Clothes seem to play an important part in what the Supremes do. Is that really true? One time we did try to start wearing hand outfits, and the fans would call and say, well, what happened to all your beautiful gowns? It's exciting to see somebody in a lot of jewelry with a mouthful of gold for people who find that beautiful. She is back. This is the transgender flag. I put my gold teeth in, I found my power. I know when I get up and I dress myself, if I like what I see, I'm happier. It's like my skin tone. It's brown. My teddy bear, my teddy bear. I love my teddy bear. Oh, these are shoes. I love my teddy bear. Beads are like a full sensory experience. <laughs> Beading is really meditative, too. It's almost like people praying on uh, rosaries or doing those, those sand paintings that the monks do. This practice is extremely rewarding for me. Black women, How's it supposed to go? we don't play about our hair. Like a ball. Like a ball. Is that right? Yeah. Is that how it's supposed to look? Okay. <laughs> Rags are like a form of protection. They're like a piece of armor or something to these boys. Yeah, let me hang with my money do rag on. Pink do rag on. Pink do rag on. You heard me? <laughs> they protect the hair. They protect the wave pattern. They hold in the moisture, and it's their form of keeping up themselves on the outside. I've always been an artist. I mean, I just grew up with art materials around me. At the same time, I was developing um, my braiding skills. So now I just look like somebody loves me. And I guess that somebody is me. <laughs> the seeds stay in your mind, they stay dormant. And then sometimes they bloom when the time is right. My name is Shani Crow, and I'm an interdisciplinary artist. I'm a lifelong braider. I use a lot of beauty supply materials, um, things that are kind of commonplace in my neighborhood, maybe your neighborhood, if you're Black. I came up with the idea for braids as it exists when I was like 12. I heard about a grant. I was like, oh, I never did those portraits that I wanted to do of black women with really beautiful braids. And then I thought back to my idea to make all these portraits of these really like wild hairstyles, a lot of like wire, I to take my braiding and, you know, combine it with other things that I know how to do. I'm a photographer, so why not do these portraits and I photograph them? And so when I was making the project, 
I wanted it, the images to be larger than life. Like, I mean, the paper that I like to use, I, I print at the full width of the paper. The presence is like imminent. Like it's, it's over you and you can't escape this beauty because of its scale. The whole thing is like, say it to my fucking face. My grandma used to live on 112th and Vernon in Chicago. There was a beauty supply up the hill that I used to go to with my cousins. I forget what that beauty supply was called, but I remember the way beauty supply stores smelled. Ooh, she's a bad bitch. You know, people say, I'll be there with bells on. It's like, yeah, we're here and we also are decorated. These days, people are gonna keep a nail and a lash and maybe like a wig, you know what I'm saying? A lot of my materials are used solely for adornment, mostly for black women, but by black people in general. Look at that transition, that's a beautiful transition. I like to use beads and other materials that are like easy to get. These are beaters, that's what I call them. I think that beads are kind of like a part of a collective memory of black womanhood. I like to use them because they are, they trigger nostalgia. I wore beads a lot as a kid. Sure, we used to have to sing at school. <laughs> <laughs> they had a super black. Yes. Yeah. A lot of the choices that I make, they're absolutely pro black. We're working from a deficit. Like, we have to undo so much of our conditioning. And I want my work to be a part of the reconditioning, <laughs> you know? Being a black woman and having hair that can change, like, your look can change so swiftly. It's just, that's a different type of power that we have just naturally. Something that, you know, was was taught to be shameful or taught to be tamed. We're now accepting ourselves more. I was ashamed of braiding. Like, as a college graduate, graduated with honors, and I'm like, why am I ashamed of it? It's something I put so much energy into. It's something I am really, really good at. And realizing that what I do is art. I will be editing the photos and tears and shit, just like. So this practice is absolutely a practice of joy. It's meant to be a slap in the face to the institution that I can take these things that are meant to kind of limit me and turn them into something beautiful. <laughs>